And it's a fast field on the water here. Dave Vilwalk back in his number one boat, the U1, defending national high point champion, Miss Elam Plus. Scoring up on the backstretch, that is J.W. Myers in the U10. Right next to him, Ken Muscatel, moving out ahead a little bit. Vilwalk in the orange boat, coming around to start finish, Jim Hendrick. They want to get down to the line just as that clock ticks down to double zeros. Largest field, 13 unlimited hydroplanes, six of which are on the course right now as they fan out for the start. That's J.W. Myers in the yellow boat, the U-10. He has lane one. Ken Muscatel is right next to him. Look at Jeff Bernard charging on the outside in the green boat. And there goes Dave Vilwalk in the bright orange Elam Plus, making a good start in the middle of the field. And to his right, Mike Allen in the FormulaBoats.com, too. Five of the six are going to go into that first turn all together. And it's a very, very tight turn here on the Columbia River. Dave Vilwalk, Ms. Elam Plus, was back just a bit at the start, but he caught the field in the turn. That's J.W. Myers has to watch out for Ken Muscatel right there. And now Vilwalk has opened up water on the field as he heads up the backstretch, the Pasco side, taking that Elam Plus up to just about 200 miles per hour. Has to keep it on the water, though. He's running fast and loose as he bounces it just a little bit. There, he's too high. Dave Vilwalk is going over. Miss Elam Plus has crashed on the backstretch. A spectacular flip, Jim Hendrick, as he got high into the air. We have good news already. He has opened the hatch. It looks like Dave might be okay. There is damage to the boat. It was a spectacular flip, Jim. He really got this boat. Miss Elam Plus got high into the Pacific Northwest sky. The damage, well, we don't know. The crew will have to take a look and see whether they can make it back in. The driver, Dave Vilwalk, is okay. He's with Jim Hendrick. Well, that was a spectacular double flip. Now, how did it look from the inside? <laughs> I've never done that before, but I just, I was guilty of trying to get the boat too tight to the water and I hit a wave. And then when I bounced up, I couldn't get it back. You know, it was blowing just at the wrong time going into the wind. So it's one of those things that's racing, but the guys will get her back together. Hope we can make a restart. Thank you. Thanks. Inside, but now he'll have to swing it a little bit wider because he was too early. The other yellow boat coming in behind him almost runs over Jeff Bernard on the outside. Now you see JW, the yellow boat on the far side of your picture, having to slow down. And the leader is going to be Jean Theoret making a great start in the U37 Beacon Plumbing. He's going to be the leader coming into the first turn with Jeff Bernard running right beside him into this incredibly high-speed turn. The U37 with JW Myers off to his left, who will be the leader as they head up the back stretch, and it is Jean Theoret, the U37 Beacon Plumbing. As he comes down the back chute, heading for the second turn, he's got it pretty much his own way. That boat is riding pretty good. An excellent boat ride. This is the former Lumar window film. A number of drivers have had success in that boat. Billy Shoemaker buying it in the offseason from Bill Worcester. Jean Theoret staying on board as the driver. Won the Gold Cup in Detroit for Billy Shoemaker and definitely one of the boats to watch here this weekend. He's leading now here in the restart of Heat 2A. The other yellow boat giving chase and that's J.W. Myers driving for Kim Gregory and the USA Racing Partners out of Las Vegas, Nevada. The U-10 racing here this weekend as Solutions Plus. And here is our leader coming down to complete lap one. Jean Theoret looks like a replay of the Gold Cup, Jim, as he's out ahead again. 152.4 miles per hour at that lap number one. Very, very quick lap in racing conditions. And again, as we have stated earlier, it is a little windier than usual here in the Tri-Cities, particularly the part of the race course where JW and Jean Theoret are headed right now. You get up into the north end and it gets bouncy, it gets rough. It is not as smooth as it looks on camera. All the drivers telling us they are having trouble controlling the race boats right in the area where Jean Theoret is now. Coming into this turn, Jim, they really have to be careful. Yes, they do. And if you remember not too long ago, this is where the Elam Plus did a one and a half loop and damage their boat that they're trying to repair right now. And that's the reason they are not here. We had to restart Heat 2A. Jean Theoret, though, has it all his way. The French-Canadian doing a marvelous job for Billy and Jane Shoemaker and the U-37 Beacon of Plumbing. He comes down to complete lap two and appears to have things all his way, Jim. We do have J.W. Myers giving chase now, but he is back away. And Jeff Bernard is currently third in his boat, the U-99. Now, let me say this. Winning the Gold Cup like they did the last race, that really is a successful year. You can win no races, but if you win the Gold Cup, you have to consider your team successful. 
kind of like the Super Bowl or the Daytona 500. You win that when you've had a great season, but they would like to win some more. Now they have a half a lap to go to a preliminary heat victory here in Tri-Cities. John Theoret, again, he'll use that front wing to pedal the front of the nose down just a little bit and keep it under control as he gets up there into the rough water. Half a lap to go now as he's into the turn. He's at the apex of the turn, and this part, Jim, is smooth. You're running down river, down wind. The current and the breeze are behind you, and he cruises across the finish line, picking up 400 points for a first-place finish. Sean Theoret and the U37 miss Beacon Plumbing. Now, officially, the first round of preliminary action for today, race day, is complete.